All right, so section 4.4, shortest path problems. So we're gonna talk about this idea of a weighted graph, what a weight is, the length of a path, and then we have two different ways, two different algorithms we'll use to find the shortest paths. All right, so a um, couple of vocabulary words. So these are called weighted graphs. So a weighted graph is a graph that has a number attached to each edge. That could be distances, could be dollar amounts, could be any number. Uh, the weight is the, 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 the number attached to the edge. So like 400 is the weight from K to A, or 1100 is the weight from A to D and so forth. And the length would be the, the sum of the weights in the path. So like for, if I wanted to go from K to S, and I just wanted to go across the top right here, that'd be 400 plus 1100 plus 1700. And so we'd be at 2200 to do that path. That would be the length of that path which is the makeup of the weights. So um, what we have down here is just like kind of running through and looking at these. And so what we've established is by trial and error, we're able to identify that the shortest path to go from, the shortest path to go from K to S is going to be to start at K and go to A and then go to B and then to D and then to S. And so the weights of 400, 400, 300, and 700 add up to a length of 1800, and that makes the shortest path. And this is all done by trial and error. So you're just kind of playing around with that. And this is just you know, the idea. So two formal algorithms came out of this. And what these algorithms allowed us to do is to kind of look at um, some more specifics to kind of like find a uh, algorithmic pattern to get there. Um, one thing we're going to make sure we need to remember for these are, is we need to know what, remember what a simple graph is. So these, uh, these algorithms only work with simple paths. So we can't have parallel paths and we can't have loops. So remember a simple path would just be like from C to D is simple. All right, sorry about that. Okay, so here we go. So um, geometric shortest path. So these steps right here we'll walk through, so I won't read those to you. You can read those yourself. That's just kind of like the definition of what we're going to do. I'm having tech issues. It's funny how when I take a break from this, I come back and have issues. So here we go. So let's say that we wanted to find the shortest path between A and Z. All right, so uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to circle A. So that's kind of in that, that previous page. This is kind of broken down. And that's where we wish to start. And then the two, we, then we look for the two vertices adjacent to A. So those adjacent vertices are B and C. And we say, okay, well, the weight of AB is four and the weight of AC is three. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna shade AC and circle C because that's our shortest route um, between those two adjacent vertices. Okay, so now we start doing the iteration of step three. So um, we look at the uncircled vertices adjacent to the ones that are circled, and we find out that's B and D. We find out that the length from A to B is 4, and the length from A to C to D is going to be 5. So because of the shortest route, we choose A to B, and we circle B. Next iteration is, is now we're looking for those vertices that are adjacent to the circled. So that would be D and E. So we identify that A, B, E would be four plus four, which is eight. And A, C, D would be three plus two, which is five. So we'll shade C, D and circle D. All right, iteration three, let's change colors this time. So iteration three, we go A, B, E, all right, and that would be eight. And we go A, C, D, E, and that would just be a total of six. So we're going to go ahead and take that one. All right. The last iteration that we would have would be as if we did A, C, D, F. So A, C, D, F. So notice we're, not, we're no longer going A to B because we've identified it's not going to be the shortest path. So we go A, C, D, E, and um, to F, excuse me. All right. So D, excuse me, A, C, D, F. Well, the thing about that is that at this point, we've already gone three, five, six plus, I'm sorry, three, five plus four would be nine. 
And then um, we know the other one would be uh, A, oops, A, C, D, and I got some out of place there at that, E, Z, and I apologize, this should be not a B, but a C right there. So A, C, D, all right? And in that path right there, it would be a total of eight. So therefore, we shape, we circle Z, and we find out that that is going to be our shortest route. So um, that would be A, C, D, E, Z would be our shortest route, and that's using the geom geometric shortest path algorithm. All right, so from there, we have another algorithm that we can use that basically what happened was this guy came along and said there's got to be a way to, to kind of make this more um, less arbitrary, less kind of like just like kind of guessing and checking your way as you work. And so in 1959, Edsger Dis Diskra um, was a Dutch mathematician, and he came up with this, this algorithm that kind of like help us just kind of narrow it on the process. It's very, very similar. And it's really just about like, like circles, um, about just kind of like checking things off as you go. And so what he discovered is, is that we're basically going to have this process that we're going to go through here. So initially we circle the vertices from which we wish to start. Um, and then we circle additional vertices. We label things as zero. And the biggest thing in here is that we are actually identifying the length of the path. So instead of just the weights, we're identifying the lengths as we go. And so let's kind of see how that works out. All right, so in Dijkstra's shortest path algorithm, to find the shortest path from K to S of this weighted graph, the first thing we're going to do is going to start off by circling where we want to start, and we're going to put a zero there. So when we take a look at the graph there, we can kind of see that we have that. And then what we're going to do is, is that we're going to label the adjacent vertices to K with their weights and label the rest of them with an infinity sign. And the infinity sign just symbolizes that we haven't used those yet. And so what we can see here is that we have... 400, so we put a 400 right there. And then we had um, a thousand right there. And then we put an infinity, infinity, and infinity. All right, so um, vertex A has the smallest, so we will circle A. So we're gonna circle A and relabel uh, vertices B and D with 800 and 1500. All right, so, um, oops, sorry about that. Yeah, that's right. Relabel vertices B and D. All right, so we got four and four, and so that gives me 800. And then we'll replace the, um, let's just do this. Boop, boop. So that's going to be 1,500 right there, and that's going to be 800 right there. And so we've got this path so far to here, all right? And so now we look at this idea again, and we say B is the smallest label, so B is 800. So this time we're going to go to, let's change colors. So we're going to come out here to B, and we're going to circle that. And so now what happens is that we change our numbers again. And so um, we now look at the two adjacent. And so we relabel C and D. So C would be um, 400 and 400 and 800. And so oh, no, nah, I see. Sorry about that. And so, but we also could go here. So we put a thousand there on the C and then we put on D, we put 1500. All right. Now what we're saying to ourselves at this point is, is that we need to make sure that we're kind of determined whether or not we've, we got enough information to find the shortest route. So let's hit pause for a second and take a look. <laughs> 